Welcome back folks. Today we're going to have a look at this Fernisi 2C53T. Now what this is, is a multifunction instrument. It's got a 50 megahertz dual channel oscilloscope, a multimeter, and a function generator. Today we're just going to look at the basic layout of the thing and the oscilloscope part of it. And then we'll come back for part two to have a look at the multimeter and the function generator. But let's get started here by turning it on. And when you first turn this on, it gives you a choice of either Chinese or English. I'm going to choose English here. And then it drops you into this menu here. Now this menu allows you direct access to the oscilloscope, the multimeter, the basic settings, and the signal generator. And the basic settings here, we have the language, which we just set. And we have the sound and lights, whether you want it to beep loudly or not beep at all, or how bright you want the screen. I turn this up for my own sake to the brightest. Start up on boot. Uh, you can go directly into the multimeter oscilloscope or signal generator if you want. Auto shutdown, you can put that at 15, 30, or one hour, or in my case, I have it off. USB sharing, you turn this on if you want to be able to get files off it. So you hook it up with the USB cable to your PC and turn on USB sharing and then that'll allow the PC to see the screenshots that you've saved. Uh, this is just about, it tells you the version of the firmware, the model number, and factory reset. And if you if you do the factory reset, it'll set it all the way back, it'll wipe everything out and put you back to where you were before. And when you turn it on next, you'll have to choose the language and so forth. And then to get out of here, you just long press the menu key so let's go in to the oscilloscope here we've got our first look at that for now let's just uh let's put it onto one channel and the way you do that here press channel two and then it'll be right on there where you need to press on or off so we'll just leave that off for now okay so one of the first things that you want to do when you turn it on is you want to do an auto calibration on it now this this does take a little while as they say in the manual and the, the way you would do that is you press this auto button until it goes into the auto calibration mode. Now you want to do this as soon as you turn it on and then it's going to go through its little process here. All right, that's all finished there. So that takes uh, roughly two minutes to complete. Let's test for the bandwidth here. So I want to move this down. Now I'm going to hook up a signal to it and uh, we're going to run that signal up a little bit to see if we can actually get uh, 50 megahertz out of this. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got exactly one roll peak to peak going into it right now. It's coming up with uh, 10 megahertz. Let us bring up this 10 megahertz at a time and see if we can get it out to 50 megahertz. So we're looking to see that the volts peak to peak doesn't descend below 0.7 volts. So let's, uh, let's bring it up 10 megahertz at a time. That's 20 megahertz, we're at 1.06 volts. 30 megahertz, we're at 1.10 volts. 40 megahertz, 1.14. So it's actually going up a little bit. It looks like the front end is peaking a little bit. Let's see, can we get this spread out a little bit more? So there, we're at, we're at our fastest uh, horizontal sweep rate here. And let's bring it up one more step. Okay. So we are being able to display a signal of 50 megahertz. We can read its frequency. But it's getting a little jittery. So we're kind of running up against uh, the Nyquist point. It's um, probably more likely a good 40 megahertz scope. You're getting your analog bandwidth. Digitally, it's not doing quite so well at 50 megahertz. But that's okay, considering the price of this thing. I think that's pretty good overall. Now, let's see what happens when we turn on the second channel. Yeah, we get a, a dramatic drop in the voltage level that we're reading from the, the sampling rate being divided between the two channels. So let's bring this down. This should behave itself around about 25 megahertz. There, okay, there we're at 25 megahertz. The voltage is still a little bit low, but it's well above the 3 dB point for, for 25 megahertz. Let's have a look and see how it does a square wave. I'm not going to push it really high in frequency for the square wave, but let's look at about 20 megahertz. Hmm. Okay. Let's bring it down a little bit and see where it, it starts to look like a square wave. 
Okay, that's not too bad. Again, you got to look at your price point here. It's not the most expensive scope in the world. And it does give you two channels, and it does give you, on a single channel, up to around about 40 megahertz of decent bandwidth. So I think that's pretty good. And you have all the usual things. If you go into the, the channel menu, we can uh, go here, we can set times 1 and times 10 on the probes. I would like to have seen times 100, that would have been nice. Um, AC coupling, DC coupling, and then let's turn on the fast Fourier transform and see what that looks like. So the FFT is not giving us a lot of useful information. As we can't see the frequencies, we can't see the amplitudes. Let's turn channel 2 off again. Bring that frequency down a little bit. Let's bring it down to 1 megahertz. Okay. Well, doing a 1 megahertz square wave just beautifully. Um, I, I don't understand the FFT at all, so I'm just going to turn that off. All right. Uh, let's see. If we put it back to a sine wave here. Let's try adjusting the trigger, see how that works. So we select trigger adjustment mode and we'll adjust the trigger up and down. It does exactly what we're supposed to do. Yeah. And of course we can move the, the trigger point horizontally as well if we wish. Uh, we'll move that over here, move this up here, and then if we press this, for more than, I think it's two seconds, it'll snap everything back to the origin again. So let's have a look at the persistence here. One second here, see what that looks like. That steadies the signal quite a bit there. And uh, let's try the cursors. Let's bring the cursors on and see if we can get them to work for us. Turn that one on. And can we turn that one on too? Yeah. So let's go back out here. So we can do X1 and Y1. So we'll go down to the bottom of the waveform here. Y1 will bring up to the top. So we press the move button and that will uh, allow us to move X2 and Y2. So let's get that over here and get the Y2 down to the bottom. And then over here we have all our measurements. All right, so you can do cursor measurements. Let's, uh, let's turn them off for now. So what, what do we have here at parameters? We have um, all on, all off, frequency with plus, volts peak to peak, peri, with minus, amplitude, duty plus, Vmax, VRMS, duty minus, Vmin, and average. Unfortunately, there's no rise time or fall time functions of, of that nature. That's a little bit of a negative. But uh, let's go in there and we'll set these to all off. And now we've got a clean screen here with no measurements on it. Let's uh, try the XY mode. Play around the frequency here. There's an interesting one. All right. So XY mode works. Let's see what else we can do with it here. Okay, so here we have display of both channels here. Each one showing something different. So it is pretty clear screen. A little bit smaller than some of the others, like the Zewi. All right. So I'm going to take out uh, take out the probes and let's. Um, Let's calibrate the probe, see what that process is like. I'm going to have to get into the frequency generator for that. Let's get in here. Long press the menu backs you out to the function selection menu. So we can go into the signal generator here. And uh, frequency is 1000 hertz and we want it as a square wave. So we'll say OK there. First of all, we'll do channel 2 here. So let's turn off channel 1 and do auto set up here okay and it does look like we need a little bit of compensation there on that there we go and that one needs a little bit of tweaking too here we go nice okay that was pretty painless let's have a look at saving an image and bring it back you just press the save button saving to number one that bmp if we want to look at it, you have to press the, the save button for a long period of time, two seconds, I think. And there it is there. So we can then bring it up and have a look at it. I don't think it has the ability to use it as a reference or anything like that. You know what? I want to have a quick look inside it. So let's do that before we wrap up for today. It's going to easily pop apart. Seems to. There we go. A couple little soft clips in it. And one connector here for the battery. 
All right. It is indeed a 3000 milliamp hour battery. So that's good. And the fuses are inside. You've got, uh, I think this would be, is this the milliamp fuse and this the amp fuse? There's no, uh, no actual markings on the fuse themselves, but there you go. This is all nice rubber, very nice soft rubber here. And it looks like a very clean layout. Unfortunately, um, we do have, uh, most of the chips have got the information sanded off them. This one here's just got a nondescript number on it. But I think we can guess that this is the main processor. This is the multimeter part of it. And the main processor is probably also doing the function generator. And this over here would be associated with the oscilloscope. And there's a metal can here covering the front end. And yeah, there we go. There's a couple of relays in there. These are a couple of big CMOS devices but a fairly dense board. I mean, there's a, lot, there's a lot of electronics on there. All right, let me put it back together again. Just before I put it completely away here, I just noticed that there's a, a little reset switch right there that is accessible through that tiny little pinhole there. So if you do get the thing going bonkers, you can always press that reset switch and get it back on track. Let me clip this together. Before we put the screws in, let's see if she still works. Here she goes. All right, folks, so that's it, our first little look at this Bernice 2C53T. We'll go through this a little bit more in the next part. We'll go look at the DMM and we'll look at the signal generator a little bit better. And that'll wrap it up for this. If there's something I didn't cover on the scope that you specifically are interested in, just leave a comment below and I'll either answer you directly in the comment or if it's important enough, I'll include it in the next video as well as looking at the DMM and the function generator. But if not, I will see you in that video. And um, that video should be out in the next couple of days. I'm going to finish this up in two consecutive videos. And then we'll move on to something else. I've got a lot of stuff here to review. And a lot of other things that I want to do as well. So I have to get started on it. The weather seems to be kind of settling down a little bit around here. So I should be able to get to have more frequent videos coming out. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me today, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.